Hi. Kevin O'Brien, I haven't seen you in a while, my friend. How you doing? Very good, thank you. Good to see you. Great to see you, my friend. Great to be here. I've been celebrating five years today. Hey, all right. Five years. Congratulations. Thank, thank you so much. That is terrific. I miss you, my friend. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's not about me today, though. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it is. It actually is. It's always I about you, Ovi. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. I'm glad I, I, I linked on now. So the mayor's running a few minutes late. So he should be logging on anytime now. Okay. Get on. The mayor. Janelle, dear. Woo, Karen. Maybe Boston, too. I don't know. Hey, so we're gonna ask folks to uh, so we're gonna ask folks to mute their phones, okay, guys? That's okay. The uh, Chief Kais is on. Commissioner Dolan, welcome. And it looks like the mayor is uh, coming on. Can you mute your phone, buddy? Sure. How do I do that? Getting some interference from somewhere else. Good morning, Madam DA. How are you? Great to see you. Always a pleasure, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor, good morning. Thank you so much. We're so honored to have you here today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, why don't we get started? Everybody, I'm just going to ask them to mute, uh, mute their phones. Um, folks, welcome. It's, uh, it's an honor to have everybody here. Um, this is our second uh, Zoom graduation. And I just can't tell you how proud I am of the graduates. This has been an extraordinarily difficult period, a period that we could have never possibly um, prepared for. Uh, and the work that you guys have done is, is just beyond heroic. Um, and the work that our recovery coaches have done has been unbelievable. You know, I talk about this all the time. We talk about what's a hero? And some people may say it's an athlete. Some people may say it's an actor. You know, Tom Brady just won his seventh Super Bowl. And that's great. And that's really admirable. But it's not real. What you have all done and the people here that are in recovery, I see my, uh, my mother's longtime <clears throat> companion, Charlie Bergeron, who was closing in on 30 years. Um, Katie O'Leary, who just got her 10-year chip. Mr. O'Brien, we just learned, got his five-year chip. That's what a hero is. Um, it's hard not to get emotional when uh, I have these graduations because this is what's real. Um, the work that you've done to reclaim your lives, the work that you've done over the last 18 months and that you'll do for the rest of your lives is real. It is beyond being a hero. It's being a superhero. When I'm down, like everybody gets down, I don't look to Tom Brady, who I love, like everybody else. I don't look to an actor. I look to everyday heroes like you. 
And I'm just so proud, and it's been the honor of my career to be part of this extraordinary, because not one of you missed a beat when we all of a sudden had to learn how to live again. Most of you that are my age, 50 and older, I'm 54, we thought Zoom was part of the electric company on PBS. There was a show called Zoom. Now we all know what Zoom is, is we can't live without Zoom. Um, to everybody, and I'll thank you more personally later, but to everybody that made this possible, especially the recovery coaches, I am the least important person in this drug court. I just sort of make sure everybody comes together. But the extraordinary work that's been done by the recovery coaches, by the probation department, by the DAs and defense attorneys has been far beyond what we thought we could do. And we got through this and you got through this. There's nothing that you can't do. And you'll always be part of the Chelsea District Court family. No matter where you are, no matter what condition, wherever you are, whatever you need, we are always gonna be here for you, always. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my Chief Justice, who uh, I am so lucky to have as a Chief Justice. He could not be more supportive. Chief Justice Kerry could not be supportive. Um, the answer is never no. The answer to all my questions are, what do you need? How can we help you more? What can we do for you? And I'm so honored to introduce my Chief Justice, um, Paul Dolly. Good morning, Judge. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be part of today's graduation. Uh, I want to start by thanking you, Commissioner Ed Dolan, uh, Chief Probation Officer Carmen Gomez and her probation staff, the entire, the entire drug court team. Uh, I thank all of you for this important work that you do. Your dedication and commitment to the drug court mission is simply outstanding. Uh, your work has made a difference, a positive difference in the lives of so many people. Uh, you're, you serve as a model for the rest of the trial court, and I'm very grateful to you, all of you, for that. Uh, I want to thank uh, District Attorney Rollins and Chief Kais of Chelsea in particular. I want to thank you for making this work a priority and for devoting the resources of your office uh, to giving people the opportunity to live a better life and for being critical parts of the drug court operation. The success of the court could not be, uh, could not happen without your support, your participation, and your leadership. And I also want to uh, particularly thank Mayor Walsh. Uh, Mayor, we thank you for all the great work that you've done in the recovery community. The trial court's grateful for your support and your contributions over so many years, first in the legislature and then as Mayor of Boston. We congratulate you on your appointment as Secretary of Labor, and we wish you the very best in the future. We're very grateful for everything you've done for all of us. Most importantly to the graduates today, to Gary, Daniel, Brett, Angelo, Taryn, Michael, and Angela, congratulations on this incredible achievement. In the middle of uh, difficult circumstances of the pandemic, your resiliency and your dedication represents uh, the continuation of just strong and great days ahead for you and for your loved ones. You've earned our admiration and our respect. We congratulate you. We wish you the best. And we want to let you know that our doors are always open to you. We, we are a resource. We want to be there for you. Uh, and we thank you very much. We wish you the very best in the future. Stay healthy, stay positive, and stay strong. Congratulations today. Thank you, Judge Mishera. Hey, I'm gonna ask our Chief uh, of Probation Officer, uh, Dr. Carmen Gomez to say a few words. I always forget to unmute. Um, <laughs> Thank you and welcome everyone. Um, you know, please accept my warmest congratulations to all of you for such a huge accomplishment. You know, you have worked so hard and sometimes it's so difficult to really acknowledge how hard you have worked. Um, but please know that we all acknowledge that. We see it every day in all your actions. We see it every day in your commitment. You know, I want to also congratulate, of course, 
the, the, the service providers, the judge, the probation offices, um, probation officer Rapucci and probation officer Tucker for doing such an excellent job and for really helping Gary, Daniel, Brett, Angelo, Taryn, Michael, and, um, and Angela um, go through this process into, into this journey to sobriety. This is hard work and we know it, uh, which is why we have the commissioner of probation here today. We have, you know, um, Deputy Commissioner Coelho, Deputy Commissioner Marisol, Deputy Commissioner Sarah Joss to support you through this process. And I'm sure that I'm probably not seeing some people, um, but all, everyone who's here, everyone who went through this process with you is here to support you and to congratulate you on such a huge success. Here in the Chelsea District Court, we believe in second chances and we believe that people can change. This is why we do that we do. In Chelsea, we are working to create a paradigm shift that moves us forward and allows us to help our communities in a more intentional and meaningful way. As you move forward, please remember this, you're not alone. As Judge Mishera said, you are now, whether you like it or not, part of the Chelsea District Court family. We all need some time, at some time or another, we all need help. Please ask for help. I know that it doesn't always seem like the, the courts are here to help, but that is one of the primary purposes of the district court to help our communities. So please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us if you need us. Not every day is a good day, but every new day brings hope and the opportunity to do better. Um, whether you're going through um, recovery or not, we all have challenges and we all have to remember that every day is just a new opportunity. And remember that it's okay to put yourselves first. I think that a lot of times we want to help everybody else and forget about ourselves. You know, make sure that you make your sobriety in recovery um, uh, uh, on the top of the list and it always stays there as you continue to stay in a good space to be able to help others. And lastly, be well. These are challenging times and we can all benefit from the kindness of others. We know that it's like uh, what it's, you guys know what it's like to be down and out. Use your experiences to help others. Together, we have the power to create a better and safer communities. Thank you so much and good luck to every single one of you. Thank you so much, Carmen. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the next Secretary of Labor for the United States and one of the greatest mayors the city of Boston has ever seen. Mr. Mayor, we are certainly gonna miss you. And it's my honor that you uh, offered to speak to our graduates today. Without further ado, the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh. Thank you very much, Judge. And, and um, thank you, I'm honored to be here today. Uh, I wanna thank the Chief Justice uh, as well. I wanna thank um, um, all the probation officers on the call, uh, the district attorney, my friend, Rachel Rawlings, um, thank you. Um, my friend, Kevin O'Brien, who's on the call today. Uh, I work with Kevin at the State House. I met him 25 years ago, April 12th. I walked into the State House, 1997, and he was, uh, he was one of the officers there, court officer took good care of me. Uh, Mike Coelho was, uh, was, 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 was representing, I think, probation at the time. Uh, he's on the call. Uh, Craig Galvin, thank you very much. Uh, Chief Kais, thank you from Chelsea. Uh, great city, um, great town. Uh, thank all of you. This is such an honor for me to be here today. Um, you know, I want to, um, I want to first of all congratulate all the graduates. Um, you know, um, Gary, thank you for your service to the United States Marine Corps. Uh, Daniel, Brett, Angelo, Taryn, Michael, Angela. Um, thank you all. Uh, I've spoken at, at many graduations before with thousands of people, but uh, this graduation means more to me than any of the other ones. Uh, I know um, that you have been through uh, very difficult times to get here today. Uh, your work on the program is not about putting a degree on a resume. It's harder than that. Uh, it's about turning back from the darkness and reclaiming your life. And that's what uh, I know that it feels like today. Um, I'm going to just widen the screen up. Um, I, I want to start, I want to restart the speech. My name is Marty. I'm an alcoholic. Um, April 23rd, 1995. Um, I thought of being the Secretary of Labor for the United States of America was not in the cards for me. The thought of being mayor of the city of Boston was not in the cards for me. Um, I wanted to be a state representative and I thought that that was in the cards for me, but um, my life was completely out of control because of alcohol. 
Um, I, every decision I made in my life that was bad, I was drunk. Uh, every decision that I made was, was alcohol drove. And I grew up thinking that I wasn't going to drink because I saw alcoholism in the home. Uh, and, and I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to use that as, 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 a, as an opportunity to, to, to ruin my life. Uh, but I followed that same path. Um, and, and when I started drinking, the, the drinking was fun and I had a lot of fun with it. I'd lie to you if I told you I didn't have a lot of fun with it. Uh, but somewhere along the line, my drinking went from being fun to, 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 to just having to drink. Uh, and, and I drank with different people all the time. So no one, no one quite saw my alcoholism, uh, but I saw it and I felt it in my heart. It was, it was a physical, it's a physical problem, obviously, but it's, it's the inside feeling that, that I had. I did it again. I did it again. Uh, and what I did again was blackout. What I did again was ruin relationships. What I did again was, was, was drink and drive, blackout. What I did again was ruin holidays. What I did again was, was embarrass myself. What I did again was embarrass myself. What I did again was, was all of those things that, that, that the seven of you understand uh, and other people on this call understand that. Um, April 23rd, 1995 was um, a Sunday. Uh, and at two o'clock in the morning, that morning, um, I had done something that uh, I'm not proud of today. And, and I walked home to my house. And I woke up later that morning and I went to the bar in the morning. And I, I drank again, because uh, I had been on a three or four day blackout bender. And later that afternoon, I went to the Bruins game at the Boston Garden. And uh, I was asked to leave that Bruins game because I was drunk and obnoxious. And I went across the street to the hop of the garden, the bar across the street, and I ordered a, a vodka and soda, I think. And I, I didn't drink it because I fell asleep at the bar, at the table. And somebody told my friend, get him out of here. You know, he can't drink anymore, meaning anymore today. And he took me home and to my apartment. And I woke up that night at nine o'clock in my room and it was dark. And I was on the second floor and I wanted to jump out the window because I had just knew my life has just come crashing down on me. Um, I had been arrested in the past. I had been in front of the judges. I had been done all that stuff in the past. Um, but this time was different because inside my heart was ripped out and I didn't know what to do. And um, I had to call my boss because I was going to work the next day and I told them that something happened to the car. And um, he, uh, he hung up on me. And uh, I, went to, I went to bed that night and I, I didn't know what to do. I was going to move to New York City for some reason and go work in the labor union. I thought that was uh, the geographical cure would have been great for me, perfect for me. Um, but I woke up the next day and I went to work and, and I went into my boss's office and um, he shut the door behind me and um, he hugged me and he told me he loved me. And he said, you're an alcoholic. And, and, and I said, yes, I am. Even though I didn't admit it, I was admitting because I was afraid of losing my job. And as he was hugging me, I was thinking, you son of a bitch. You know, I drank with you. Who, do you. who are you to think to tell me how to stop drinking and all that stuff? You know what I'm talking about. And he gave me a phone number to call and I walked back to my office and I had it all figured out. Uh, I was going to go see a counselor. I was going to go to some AA meetings. And in a few months, I was going to just drink like a normal person, not drink like an alcoholic. And um, that was not what the plan God had for me. And I called that number and it was a... Uh, guy on the other end of the phone and he gave me a test and, and I'm not a good test taker and I passed uh, and he said you're an alcoholic and, and he admit he suggested I go inpatient in Gosnell down the Cape and I nearly somebody hit me in the head with a cinder block because that was not my plan and I said I can't go I can't go inpatient what do you mean like stay over he said yeah I said I can't do that and and, and he said why I said well I coach Little League Little League starts next week and um and um he said, well, if you want to deal with your alcoholism, you need to do that. And I did go to Gosnell, and, and I, and I, but I let him convince me. I convinced him to let me wait a week um, before I went down to Gosnell. So uh, April 30th, 1995, I got in my car on a Sunday morning, and I drove out of my house, and I drove, was driving down to Gosnell. And anyone who knows is familiar with Dorchester, I, I hit I, the red light at the corner of Dorchester Avenue, Sabinal Avenue. Uh, I was the first car at the red light. And to the right was my bar, hot and bad. And to the right was the door. I could see the door. It was about 1130 on a Sunday. And every Sunday at 1130, you'd find me at the hot and bad. Because if you had a menu in front of you, you could order a drink. And I knew my bartender was in there waiting for me. And I knew my frosty glass was in there waiting for me. I knew the Bud Light was in the chest. I knew it was freezing cold from the night before. And um, at that moment, I think the grace of God into my life because I drove. The light turned green and I kept going. And I drove down to Gosnell and I was down the Cape. 
my first day, my first day of the treatment, my first night of the treatment, an Alcoholics Anonymous group came in and, and, and shared their experience, strength and hope. And I figured what they said, but the first guy that came in, he talked about his alcoholism and he hooked me. Um, and, and he said something that, that just kind of got me curious. And for that week, I listened. I listened to what, what alcoholism is. I learned that it's a disease. I learned that there's a compulsion. I learned about yets and, and yets for me is drugs. There's no question about it. And I learned that you take your life a day at a time. And the counselor suggested I go on my knees and ask God to help me stay away from a drink or a drug. And I went into my, 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 my room that night. And before my roommate came in, I jumped on my knees and I had a conversation with God. It was the first time I had a conversation with God that I wasn't asking to hit Keno to keep drinking. I wasn't asking to, you know, get the girl across the bar. I wasn't asking to get me out of a gym. I wasn't asking. I just prayed. And I was down there for a week and I came out of that place and, and I joined a group. I got a sponsor and, and I started, I went to a lot of meetings uh, and, and, and every time I went to a meeting, I heard something because I didn't compare with who was talking. I tried to identify and, and even today I still do meetings and I still hear that and, and slowly, but surely actually pretty quickly, my life, my life got started to turn around. People noticed the difference in me. People noticed that I was calmer. People noticed I was responsible. People noticed that I looked good. And a year and a half later, I was running for state representative to represent my neighborhood in Dorchester at the state house. And, and I got elected and, and I had an amazing opportunity to be a state rep um, and, and represent Dorchester. But I still went to meetings and I still stayed active with my sponsor. And I met a guy at the state house. He was a friend of mine. He was a state representative and, and he became my sponsor. And, um, and, and he was my sponsor. And Kevin knows him. Kevin Fitz. A lot of people on this call know him. Kevin Fitz. And, and uh I often thought when I was, I often had this crazy idea as an alcohol, recovering alcoholic that if I was diagnosed with terminal cancer or, or a terminal disease that I would drink scotch and drink Manhattans and martinis and all the stuff I didn't drink when I was drinking. And Kevin Fitz was dying of cancer later, later in his life. And he said to me one day, I went over his house and he was, he was talking about dying sober. And he said, there's nothing like it. And for me, it was another sign from God that, that, you know, keep your ears open and pay attention. And in 2013, I had the chance to run for mayor of the city of Boston. And um, I got elected mayor of sure of the city for the last seven years. Um, still going to meetings, still helping people. I have a phone number that I will not change because too many people that are in recovery have the number and too many people that are sick and suffering um, need the number. And, you know, working with Craig and a bunch of other people, you know, I don't lug as many people around to meetings as I used to, but I still get people into treatment and programs and Craig lugs them around for me, uh, him and Danny Ryan. Um, and, you know, I ran for mayor and I had a chance to be mayor of the city of Boston for the last seven years. And about seven weeks ago, I was uh, in my office here and my phone rang and I met, I met Joe Biden uh, through Kevin Fitzgerald. And when I, when I left the state house, I took my chair that was my state rep chair and it was in my back office here. And in my back office is a big picture of Kevin Fitz. And um, Kevin Fitz was a state rep who was sober over 30 years. And Joe Biden called me and he asked me to be a secretary of labor. And I went in the back office and I sat in my state rep, state rep seat unbeknownst to me. And I was looking up at the picture of Kevin Fitzgerald. And um, when I said I, I would accept the, the, the nomination I looked at the picture and I saw a picture of Kevin Fitz and I said to Joe Biden, the president, I said, it's America. I'm looking at a picture of Kevin Fitz right now and he loved Kevin Fitz. And he said, God rest his soul. And I tell you that story because there's no coincidences. There's no coincidences that my last speech as mayor could be this one right here. Because I'm probably going to get a call later on today, this week, and to tell me that they're going to vote me in the Senate next week, something like that for Secretary of Labor. And my last speech as mayor of Boston is exactly what it should be talking to seven people who, in my opinion, are heroes to me that have gone through a difficult time in your life and you've successfully completed that and you've graduated that moment and you should be proud of yourself. The past is the past. There's nothing we can do about the past except restore the past. We can make amends to people that we have to make amends to when the time is right. But you put a lot of hard work into this. Give yourself a chance. You have no idea what could, what's in your future? April 23rd, 1995, I was walking down the street drunk 
at three o'clock in the morning. It was actually three, it wasn't two. It was three, 3.30 in the morning. I was stumbling to my house, to my apartment. And I went up to bed and no, would I ever have thought that 25 and a half years later that I'd be potentially the mayor of the city of Boston and, and becoming the secretary of labor of the United States of America. The answer is no. The gifts of sobriety are amazing. And, you know, just, I, I ask you this, just to continue when you, when you, when you, as you complete this program, join a group, get a sponsor, go to meetings, help other people, reach your hand out, help people that need the help. And no offense, but don't get the fuckets. Because if you get that, that's bad thinking. And we all get that once in a while. Don't get that. And I apologize for saying that, but I need to say that because I can't say it any clearer, any clearer way. There's a whole bunch of people on this Zoom that are so proud of you. There's a whole bunch of people on this Zoom that you might never meet that are praying for you every night. Every night before I go to bed, I thank God for a day of sobriety. I pray for the sick and suffering alcoholic and I learned that in AA meeting. And I'm so grateful for, for the life that I have today that I can give away my sobriety to other people. And what you've done for me today, the seven of you, each and every one of you, what you've done today is give away your sobriety to me to help me stay sober. So to Gary, to Daniel, to Brett, to Angela, to Taryn, to Michael, to Angela, I am so proud of the accomplishments that you have gotten, you've, you've, you've done for yourself and your family. And I want you to know that I'm just a phone call away. And thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak at your graduation today. I will not forget the fact that I spoke at your graduation today. And I hope that you continue to stay sober, live your life a day at a time. God bless you and thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, we're truly honored and we wish you nothing but the, uh, the best of success down in Washington. Uh, I'm now gonna ask our esteemed district attorney um, we have a great partnership with the DA's office. They've been fantastic. Um, ADA uh, La Matina <clears throat> proactively sought out to join the team of the drug court and has been a phenomenal um, partner. And um, I can't say enough about uh, the head DA, uh, Miriam Feliz, who has been just such a superstar during this pandemic. And without her leadership, this drug court would not have and this court would not have survived. So with that, it's my honor to introduce District Attorney Rachel Rollins. Thank you so much, uh, Chief and God. I have to go after uh, Mayor Walsh, who is just, what a moving um, what a moving speech. And I have just been so honored to work with you um, for my two short late years as District Attorney um, and know how deeply you care about the city of Boston. I also know Chelsea is not part of Boston, so it's wonderful for you to have the mayor of Boston here, but, um, but I will just say, you know, I'm not a recovering uh, alcoholic and don't have this addiction, but I'm the sibling of um, and daughter of, uh, of people in recovery. And as a result of that, I'm the guardian of two of my nieces. So although the mayor touched on some of the shame and the hurt that you have experienced in this journey of possibly losing your children or losing your job or, you know, um, being... Uh, estranged from your family, the beautiful part of this process is you get to be reunified with your children, I hope. Um, and I, on March 5th, my youngest niece, Victoria, who Mayor Walsh knows very well and has taken many, many photos with that I've been the guardian of since she was two, um, is going to be reunified with her mom because my younger sister is in recovery. And I have been to many, many graduations like this, not as the district attorney, but as the sibling or loved one of a person that was in recovery. Um, and you know, I hope this is your last, um, but we know that things aren't easy. And to what um, the first justice, Mishara said, we're part of your family now, maybe not blood family, but we will be there to celebrate the good and we will be there when things are really hard. And as we all know, things um, often are. So, you know, again, to hear about the seven of you, um, Gary, you know, I, pre I thank you for your service in the Marine Corps. My dad was a Navy corpsman, so I have a deep love for the Marines. Um, Daniel, Brett, Angelo, Taryn, Michael, and Angela, um, we want you to know that the DA's office, we don't want to be here 
uh, with respect to prosecution. We want you to come back and maybe we hire you um, as somebody who's assisting us um, and teaching us and learning. And when we're speaking with um, people uh, across Suffolk County, not just in recovery, but at all that have touched the criminal legal system in positive and not so positive ways. We want you to be there with us when we're um, learning and adapting, ever adapting in this. Um, so that being said, you know, I just, I wanna personally tell you, I'm proud of you. Um, First Justice, you know, hearing you speak about Supervisor uh, Miriam Felice, she is phenomenal. Um, Chief Justice Kai's, uh, I'm not Chief Justice, not yet, he is a lawyer, but Chief Kai's, the police department, um, and uh, ADA La Matina, we have just a very good relationship in Chelsea, and I spoke with um, Chief Dolly, and um, recently with uh, the uh, Chief Carey and others, and we look at Chelsea as a, a, a gold standard of the way that things are done with the hub that you have um, with respect to your community and all of the great connections you have with the Chelsea Collaborative and everything else. So I'm just here as a fan. Um, I will be here till the end. And if there is anything, you know, I don't think any of you guys have my number like you might have the mayor's, but if there is anything I can ever do to help you in a positive way, please do not hesitate to ask me. Um, and, and just, I'm proud of you, continue on. Thank you so much, DA Rollins. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Craig, Craig Galvin <clears throat> years ago when uh, he helped me buy my condo in Dorchester. Mr. Mayor, I lived in uh, St. Brennan's. Um, I had my condo down there. Um, and it's back when I was a young DA, and then I became a defense attorney. And one day I was doing bar advocate work in Chelsea District Court, and I see the mayor of Dorchester, Craig Galvin, sitting in the back. And I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, ah, just helping somebody. And I realized then what Craig was doing. The thing people don't know about the mayor and about Craig is if you call them at three o'clock in the morning, no matter where you are, they're gonna come and help you. And I was just, just absolutely captivated by the story and the effort that they had made to give back. So I asked Craig to be our special uh, recovery speaker today. So it's my pleasure to introduce Craig Galvin. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to everybody if he's not as good as me. You know, he's not. <laughs> he's, from, he's from a different parish. I'm from St. Margaret, so he might not be quite as good. So don't hold it against him, just for the record. <laughs> uh, th thank you, everybody. St thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm humbled to be uh, speaking in this in this graduation. First, congratulations to the graduates. Second of all, um, you know, thank you to everybody, uh, esteemed guests who took time out of their day to let them know that you guys are worth it. And uh, I know Kevin from the circuit and good to see you, Kev. Awesome. Congratulations, buddy. Um, and it's good to be here. I'm blessed. You know, um, I got here and I thought I was lucky. And, um, you know, my sponsor, Danny Ryan, taught me that I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. And uh, that's what's happened to me in this program is that I've been blessed. And uh, Danny taught me that, you know, and you guys are showing it here today that, you know, we all deserve one, we, you know, we should get one more chance than we deserve. And uh, you guys are showing that today. It, it is emotional to be here to watch this. Uh, it's emotional to be part of it. And, um, you know, this program, Alcoholics Anonymous and Recovery Works, um, and today, you know, I, I'm blessed. I walk this planet a free man. I'm not ruled by a drink or a drug. Um, it does come with hard work and it comes with connection. You know, when you guys talked about it and uh, DA Rollins, thank you for bringing it up. And the Honorable Matt Mashera, thank you for bringing it up. And, and you guys did, you, you talked about those things like that you're part of something right now. You're part of this family. I never thought I was part of anything. And that was very difficult for me. I always felt like an outsider. So today, if you're here and you feel like an outsider, you're right where you're supposed to be. And what I would say is don't give up. Do not, please do not give up before the miracle happens. I can't put it as eloquently as the mayor did because I'd probably get in trouble for that. But that's what he's saying. Don't give up before the miracle happens. Get a sponsor, connect with other humans, you know? And uh, you know, my sponsor taught me a long time ago to help three people a day. Right. And you see it happening here. People with, that aren't in the program, but us people that are in the program, say hi to somebody. 
hold the door at Dunkin' Donuts and don't expect anything in return, right? You know, this one, my girlfriend will tell me I have a hard time doing, which is let somebody in in traffic. You know what I mean? And don't expect anything in return. All of those little things. That's hard for me, Craig. Sorry, just I, I'm joking. All right, go ahead. I, <laughs> how apropos, I understand. I'm with you though. I'm with you, District Attorney. But um, you know, it's it's just this is this is the thing that works. And just like, don't find a way to get out of here. Like, I don't like Zoom. The seats don't work. You know, uh, they cancel. You know, I can't go to my hall. I only like outside meetings. I don't really need to talk to people. I, all I can tell you is I have 27 years without a drink. And the most successful time that I've had is when I connect with other humans and other alcoholics. And I put my hand out to them. And, you know, uh, the mayor and, you know, Dean Ryan and others have showed me how to do that. I didn't know how to do that before. I must have wanted to because I enjoy it. Um, but, I, you know, I believe in second chances. And, you know, if you don't believe you're worth it today, believe that we believe you're worth it. Right. And the day that you're by yourself and you're alone, you're in trouble. Right. Those are bad places for us to be. So, like, the way not to do that is to have a couple of hundred phone numbers in your phone from people in Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's what I have. You know, and, um, and I see Katie on here. She's a rock star. Right. She's amazing. Right. She helps people all the time and she does what she's supposed to do. And for all those probation officers on here, the chief justice, you know, the honorable Matt Mishara and the district attorney. Thank you for giving everybody one more chance than they deserve because it made a difference in however many people's lives today. I mean, seven people are graduating, but their whole families have changed and you've changed the path of their life just by giving them one more chance than they deserve. So with that, I'll pass it. Have a good day unless you guys got other plans. Craig, thanks so much. You know, obviously I'm the, like I say, I'm the least important person in this process. And that was especially true when all of a sudden we were suddenly struck with a pandemic. And then all of a sudden is what do we do with our drug court? And then superstar Katie O'Leary and another superstar who you may not know, Caitlin Gillespie, seamlessly transferred this drug court online before anybody else knew what to do. Katie, Congratulations, I know you just got your 10 year chip and I just can't tell you how proud I am of you. Um, Caitlin Gillespie, just amazing. Moved this online absolutely seamlessly and did not miss a beat. Katie's phone is one of those phones that must uh, have 27 batteries because it's going off nonstop. Without you two guys, this thing would have been an absolute um, disaster instead of the unmitigated unbelievable success that it is. I want to thank Janelle Rapucci, who is our, our drug court probation officer, who had a baby, and then probation officer Caitlin Tucker stepped in. Again, another seamless transition. Um, I want to thank uh, Chief Kais and uh, Chief Dave Callahan from Revere Police. Chief Kais and I go way back. He's just a tremendous, tremendous chief, uh, one of the best chiefs in the country. The work that you proactively do uh, to get people help is just something I, I, I've never seen before. All the probation officers and all the clerks have been just unbelievable. We have the best clinician, Summer, who also had a baby uh, and within a few months came right back. And I want to thank uh, some people that don't get maybe the credit that they deserve. Attorney Barry Bisson and attorney, attorney Ed Walker. They don't get extra money as defense attorneys to do this. They do this because they want to do this. The amount of extra work that they do to be on call to help people sort of goes unnoticed, uh, but they are as important, if not the most important part of what we do. And, you know, people sometimes look at court as a place of hurt. We're in there in our worst time. We're in there when nothing good can happen. But the whole theory of a community court and the whole theory of Chelsea is that we're part of the community. We're a place of help, not just hurt. The last thing we wanna do is to send someone to jail. And if people just realize things like the drug court, the services and the people that are all pulling for you, um, we wanna be a place of help and we're always gonna be here for you. I say this all the time to defense that appear in front of me. You don't have to be court involved to get help. 
Chief Kais will tell you, you don't have to be court involved to get help. DA Rollins will tell you, you don't have to be court involved to get help. We have resources that many people don't think that we have. We have them. And if we don't have them, we'll find them. And if we can't find them, then we call Katie O'Leary and Caitlin Gillespie, and they'll find them. Because you don't want, you don't want to say no to Katie O'Leary on the phone. <laughs> so I want to uh, introduce um, Caitlin Tucker, who uh, seamlessly stepped in uh, and did just an unbelievable job with uh, um, stepping in when uh, Janelle had her baby. So, uh, Officer Tucker. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you so much to, uh, to Mayor Marty Walsh, as well as DA Rollins for being here. Um, it's truly an honor to have you guys here today. Um, so when I assumed the role of drug court probation officer a little over three months ago, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect. Um, what I found is that this is so much more than just a court session. This is a community. Um, it's a community with judges and recovery coaches, with attorneys and probationers, with navigators and clinicians. And while we may all be here for different reasons, we all have one thing in common. And that's that everyone here works really hard with the common goal of the participants graduating successfully. The participants by far are the ones working the hardest. Um, so part of why I became a probation officer is because probation is, is the one aspect of the criminal justice system where the focus is not on what somebody did, but rather on what someone's going to do next. And it's probation's role to lift people up and to help them learn how to make healthier choices. And that's what these men and women have done against all odds with the cards stacked against them during a pandemic. They are seven examples of battles fought and won. It has been truly inspiring and impactful to have been in their corner and to have played a small role in that with them. This drug court program recognizes that sobriety is a marathon and not a sprint, that falling down, it doesn't mean staying down and that the dedication, perseverance and determination <clears throat> that all of these graduates have shown is worth it. That sobriety for even the most addicted substance users is achievable. It has been an honor to be a part of that for these graduates. I am so proud of each and every one of you um, and congratulations to all of you for a job well done. Okay, so before we start to award this, I just need to give a shout out to uh, my mother who's on the, here. It's hard to sit with this robe on and not uh, acknowledge uh, what my mother has done for me. Uh, being one of four raised by a single mother when my father left us when we were very young on a secretary salary and um, who was also dealt in the recovery community. Her longtime uh, partner, Charlie, has been in recovery for almost 30 years. And I'm proud to say that my brother, Mike, is also closing in on 30 years of being sober. And uh, just two more of my heroes that I need to acknowledge. So um, first up, uh, and I gotta ask you to say a few words. Um, you guys should all be comfortable talking by Zoom right now, is uh, Brett Labriola. Hey, Brett, we're gonna get that out to you. Nice, perfect. Congratulations, Brett, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, my, my biggest thing with all this is like, is, is the help that, that everybody's given me, you know what I mean? And I, I mean, absolutely everybody that's been involved in this, I mean, especially Caitlin, because like, obviously she's more hands-on with us. Um, I don't know. Every, everything's just been awesome. Like uh, my life is totally different now. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm happy. <clears throat> I'm happy. I just, I just really, I, I can't really like believe the changes. You know what I mean? I never, I never expected things to like, to be this good again in my life. You know what I mean? And uh, really, I mean, I, I'm just thankful really. Uh, every day when I wake up, I'm thankful. And, uh, Congratulations, Brett. Who would have thought, you know what I mean? Drug court, <laughs> See, you know, I mean. You did fantastic. Incredible. Remember, we're always here, Brett, okay? Yep. I Congratulations, you guys. Brett. I'm Wasn't so happy for you. Thank you. Next up, Mike Simonetti. As my mother will tell you, I am frequently wrong. And I, uh, I fought like hell against Michael Simonetti being in drug court. 
<laughs> because I thought it was a waste of time. I looked at his attitude. I looked at his record and I said, it's not going to happen. And it's the most wrong I've ever been. And the most happy wrong I've ever been because you were beyond a superhero. You were flawless. A lot of uh, knocks got thrown your way during these 18 months. And like a superhero, you knocked each and every one of them down. You did not stop. You kept your head down and you plowed forward. And I could not tell you what an inspiration you've been to my life. Mike, congratulations, my friend. Thank you so much, Judge Mashera. Thank you, everybody else who came, Mayor Walsh, uh, DA Rollins. I mean, it's it's been a journey. You know what I mean? Like um, people who don't think that God's in their life. For me, God showed up in handcuffs. I would have never gone this route had it not been for this. And then when Judge Mashera told me that I wasn't drug core material, it made me want it more. That's one thing you tell to an addict or an alcoholic. You can't have it. It makes you want it more. And I made a promise to... Uh, to my now fiance and um, to uh, Kylie Jacobson, I won't let you down. I'm not going to get ripped out of your life. And I'm happy to say that I held true. I held true to those promises. It wasn't without the help of Barry Bisson and Kylie Jacobson fiercely advocating for me and Caitlin being there, just, you know what I mean? As a sounding board, Janelle was always there. I mean, we had a ton of conversations throughout this time and it's, it's been a wild ride and uh, it's been really difficult, but it's like you said, it's a community. I mean, even drug court participants like Brett, he's a solid friend of mine. He's been nothing but a help. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy with the way that everything turned out. And uh, it is, it is hot. Anybody who tells you that it's easy is lying to. And um, it, that's why building a network and having good people in your life is so important. Like people that don't want anything from you, but just to see you do well. And I earned the respect of my peers and of you, of you people, just by showing you like where I was at and what I was trying to do. And I mean, even just going through the halfway house that I went through and then eventually being asked to work there. I mean, that's, that's huge. Like I want to give back. I want to do these things to help somebody else who's in a position like me and just be able to do the best I can and be the best version of me that there is. So I'm going to continue to work and I'm going to keep doing everything that I need to do to not show up on the other side of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like this version of court much better. Um, just, yeah. Thank you guys so very much. And um, thank you everybody else. And in the drug court, you know what I mean? For showing, you know, your tenacity and your fortitude and just letting everybody else know that you can do this if you put in the work. And I believe in each and every one of you. I know you're all destined for great things. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mike. Thank Congratulations, you. Michael. I'm so proud of you. Next up, Angela DeAngelis. Hi, Angela. Unfortunately, Angela consistently has some tough on the Zoom. Can you hear us, Angela? Hi. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. The work that you have put in and the fact that you're already giving back to the recovery community is just so admirable and awesome. You are always in such a positive, good mood. You bring just such a beacon of light to this drug court. And I'm just so proud of you. And you better uh, stay in touch with us. I will. Um, I just want to say, you know, I'm so grateful for the um, drug court because I totally believe that if I didn't follow through with drug court that I probably wouldn't be alive today. Like how many times that, um, it took me a long time to graduate. So like, I'm just, I'm just proud of myself and um, grateful to be a part of this team, like to be a part of this. And um, I don't know, I'm, I wanna thank everyone who um, shared today and uh, it was really inspiring to hear like everyone's story. And I'm just, I'm just, I can't be more grateful. Thanks. Thank you so much, Angela. Next up, Taryn Conley. Woo! <laughs> That's another drug court graduate. Jamie, say hi. Hi, Taryn. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Jamie's hi. another drug court oh, graduate God. superstar. Thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Taryn, I'm, so, I'm, so, yeah. I'm so proud of you. You've been, 
another one. No matter what got thrown at you, you knocked it down like Bye. crushing boulders <laughs> with your bare hands. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, Taryn. Can't hear. We can't hear you, Taryn. Thank you. Thank you. I literally, I remember sitting down in the holes and saying, can, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you, yep. Oh, okay. I said, I remember sitting down in the holding tank and me and Angela were like, we're gonna take drug court. And I'm like, Angela, I'm not gonna be able to do drug court. I'm gonna be back in jail in friggin' a week. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. I just, so. <laughs> But thank you guys for everything you guys did. Caitlin, um, Janelle, Judge, all the participants in it. Because if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know if I would have even thought I'd be able to do it. So thank you. You better stay in touch with us, Taryn. I will. Congratulations. Even though I'm not from Chelsea. I'm from Chelsea. Everyone's like, how'd you end up in Chelsea drug court? <laughs> It's okay. You're from Chelsea now. <laughs> right. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Next up, Angela Stefano. Where's Hi. my man, Angelo? Right here, right here. Can you hear me? How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. The positive energy and the good attitude and the constant smile on your face is going to be sorely missed in the next drug court meetings. We may have to hire you just to come in and possess some positive energy. Again, another absolutely flawless performance in drug court. And I just can't tell you how proud I am of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, I was talking to Caitlin on, you know, texting Caitlin about this and I asked her if we were gonna have to speak or expected to speak so I started to write some things down but uh as I started to write things down the 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 speech just got longer and longer so um I'll try to I'll try to keep it short and sweet here uh summarize everything that I wrote but um they say you learn more from your failures failures than your successes. And the wise man said that the greatest teacher is failure. Uh, you know, it can become easy to become complacent and forget to realize all the good things that you have sitting in front of you. Not too long ago, I thought I had everything going pretty well. I had a career, an apartment, friends, a good life, and not a worry in the world. But what I also had was a heavy addiction. And no matter how much I lost, I couldn't put the bottle down. Eventually, I ended up losing everything and everyone around me, and I failed myself. It wasn't until I failed myself and wound up in jail for 90 days that I realized that I had to make a change. And long story short, because I'll go on forever, I decided to make a change. Uh, and I decided to stay sober. Uh, and then I got accepted into drug court and it just became so much easier. Uh, the help here was un unlike any help that I've ever got before. Um, the support was amazing and I thank everybody, you know, probation officers, Mr. Pucci, Ms. Tu Ms. Tooker, and Caitlin. Um, Caitlin has been a major help in my recovery process and uh, I don't think I would be able to thank her enough. And I thank everybody in drug court, the participants, because uh, the thought of disappointing you guys is not just another driving factor to stay sober. So yeah, um, I thank everybody and I wish everybody the best of luck and I'm proud of everyone. Thank every, and I thank everybody for coming and congratulations, Mayor Walsh. Best of luck. Proud of you, Angelo. Thank you so much, Angelo. Congratulations. Now, I'm not sure if Aunt, if uh, Gary's on the screen, Gary Detrimont. Did we not get in touch with him, Caitlin? 
Um, Your Honor, I tried a few a few times to get a hold of him. I was unable to do so. Okay, I know he's had some some pro problems in the past, and now comes the best for last. Not the best for last, but the best for last, and me being wrong. As hard as I fought against Mike Simonetti, I fought ten times harder against Danny McGuire. I looked at his record and the fact that every time he came into court, nobody has sworn at me as much and as often as Danny McGuire. I've never had anybody fight so hard to come into drug court. I was just ready to give him his time. But he fought and he fought and he convinced me. And God almighty was I wrong. Just another example of how dumb I am. So halfway during Danny's probation, we lost track of him. And I was like, oh God, where is he? Where's he using? And the reason Danny lost contact with us is because he was struck by a hit and run driver and almost killed in South Boston. He was in a coma for months recovered and then took control with his doctor of his own pain management to make sure that he would not use again. If you guys are superheroes, then Daniel McGuire is the chief of all superheroes. I have never seen anything in my life and I would be hard pressed to find a drug court graduate in this country that has been more successful than you. And I have never been so happy to be so wrong in my life. Danny, from the bottom of my heart, you are one of my all-time true heroes. And congratulations, buddy. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I, I'm, I'm not at a loss for words. I just, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody's help. And uh, that's all I could say. I, I hope to stay in touch with everybody. And uh, it's nice to have this network. And I couldn't have done it without you. And uh, I just wish every, everybody the best. Everybody be safe. And let's stay in touch. And uh, we'll continue to get it done. And. Um, um, I really don't know what to say. I'm just, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Danny. We're so proud of you. I know thank we have a lot of, much. we have a lot of people and, uh, just briefly, if anybody wants to add anything before I, uh, I close it out and make my, uh, thank yous. Um, Craig, if I, if I could jump in judge real quick. Sure. Chief. I, I just want to let you know, the chief justice know, you know, how incredible of a judge that you are. I mean, quite honestly, I've known a lot of judges through the years and, and not just here in Chelsea district court, but throughout the Commonwealth, uh, you are by far the most caring judge uh, I've ever met in my career, uh, 34 years here in Chelsea, you wear your heart in your sleeve, you care, you're emotional, you're committed. I mean, I just, I just, I want to recognize you, you know, in front of chief justice, you are phenomenal for what you do. And certainly, to um, what I what I see here the today the magnificent seven uh, you guys have really touched my heart I know that we're all on a bunch of zooms uh, <coughs> today this is definitely the best zoom that I've had so far not this week not this month but this year this was phenomenal and certainly to see the the, the mayor and here is very personal and impactful story uh, very courageous and I'm proud to call him my friend and can't wait to see him as the uh, future secretary of labor that that's phenomenal. And then I look at it around it, at all the faces and certainly all the heavy hitters on the call today with uh, D.A. Rollins, uh, Chief, Ju Chief Gomez, Ka Carmen's a great friend and another one. Ph uh, she's phenomenal. She's committed to this program. Katie, I was looking at Katie earlier and she was in traffic. I think you were going over the bridge or, or what have you. I was getting dizzy watching the Zoom, but Katie is phenomenal. Uh, Mike Kane, I can see this on the call. Um, as well as Jason Owens. Jason's, I mean, these are the, the folks in the trenches on the street getting things done. So I, I just feel, I feel for all you guys and the, and the personal stories. And I'll just, a uh, two second story. My, my dad had passed away uh, three years ago and my dad was in recovery 
uh, for, for 37 years. And I know that every time that uh, my parents had moved from Chelsea down to Hanson and me and my brothers would get out and see them, he'd always talk about going to the meetings. He would always talk about, did you see this is my chip, my new chip? And, and I, I never, you know, I, I never really realized how committed that my father was, like many of you, uh, to the program and to recovery. Um, then in my career, just being a police officer and having occasion to go around the different meetings and so forth, different just meetings in, in my world of criminal justice and so forth, I'd always have someone that would come up to me and whisper in my ear and just say, I know your dad, I met your dad, he helped me a lot. And I'm getting a little emotional, I'm going to hold back, but that was, and just hearing you guys and, and, and your stories, phenomenal. And again, I'll just close with this, you know, the Judge Machera, I mean, no one is like him. You meet him on the street and then all the, uh, all the prestige and power that, that he has, he doesn't show that. He's a, you know, we always say the biggest compliment uh, to, no, no offense to the ladies, but, you know, to, to men is say he's a regular guy and the judge is absolutely a regular guy and uh, phenomenal. And uh, I'm, I'm glad he invited me. I love being part of this. And uh, thank you all, the Magnificent Seven. You guys are heroes. Keep it up. There'll be no doubt tough times ahead. Lean on each other. Lean on your friends, your family, your recovery coaches, and you'll get through. Uh, so thank you very much for inviting me. And, and I'm proud of all you guys. Steve, thanks so much. But any credit I have for who I am is because of the woman uh, on the call who raised four lunatic children. Um, and this road means nothing. She still tells me how fresh I am. Um, Commissioner of Probation, uh, Ed Dolan is with us. I did not know that. I want to welcome him and give him a chance to say a couple of things real quick. Uh, thanks, Judge. So one, I, I'll be really quick. One, it's a privilege just to be on the list with uh, you know, Mayor Walsh and the district attorney, Chief Justice Dolly and everyone. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm actually a Chelsea kid. Um, I should note that Chelsea my, was my home for 29 years. So I think of the Chelsea District Court as kind of the home team, go Red Devils, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, just like everybody else on this call, um, you know, addiction and substance abuse has sort of touched us all and buried a lot of friends. And, uh, and relatives to drugs in my time. And I feel like now that I'm older, I'm uh, sort of attending the funerals of uh, the children of my friends. And uh, so, you know, I think that you all in this business know up close what a tragedy it is uh, on one side, but an event like this is all the more remarkable because it's a miracle. You know, this is really, uh, you know, what, uh, has been done with the Chelsea Drug Court and you know the people that uh, on this call who they know how tough it is. They built it. They know what a process it is and all the challenges and you know it's just it's not easy. And the seven of you that have gone through it know up close and personal that it's not easy. And so this is a remarkable achievement. And you know that this is a, a graduation or a commencement. That's that's not a a casual term because it's. It is, it's the end of one thing, but the beginning of a new phase of your lives. And, uh, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity of miracle. I urge you to take advantage of it. Like you heard on the call, the folks in the drug court, the folks in the Chelsea District Court are there for you. This isn't a, you know, uh, a one and done. Um, and they're really invested in your success. And so, I just want to sort of add that, you know, one, I couldn't be more proud. Of, this is what probation is all about. People are not on probation to be punished. The punishment is being on probation. It's all about, you know, P.O. Tucker said it the best that, you know, we really are uh, in the rehabilitation business and helping people be successful. That's what we're, that's what this is all about. And uh, so you make us proud and you should be proud uh, of what you've accomplished. This is remarkable. So anyway, thank you for the invitation. And, uh, you know, thank you, Judge Mashera, for your leadership on this. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Mayor Walsh. We're so honored. We wish you nothing but the best at Godspeed in Washington. DA Rollins, thank you so much. Craig, thank you. My Chief Justice, uh, Dolly, thank you so much. Caitlin Tucker, Commissioner Dolan, everybody that's on the call. You know, instead of clapping, I just wanted to show a sign of respect to the seven graduates. You know, when a judge walks in a room, in a courtroom, Everybody stands up as a sign of respect. So to the seven of you, I stand to respect each and every one of you. Thank you all so much. God bless you all. And remember, 
Um, you're part of the family now, whether you like it or not. So everybody be healthy, everybody be safe. And from the bottom of my heart, it's been an honor um, to be with you all for these many, many months. Thank you so much. Congratulations, everybody. Look at that baby. Hi, Janelle. Oh, look at oh, the baby. Janelle, look at the baby. Congrats, everybody. Oh, she's adorable. Oh, my God. We miss you, Janelle. Thank Congratulations. you, guys. I'm so proud of you all. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I'm trying to hold back tears over here. We're counting the days for you to come yes. back. We miss you. <laughs> I miss you guys, too. Oh, my God. So beautiful. Hi. So Hi, everybody. Janelle, I'm sorry. I should have given you a chance to speak. I totally, I totally apologize, Janelle. You should no, say No, that's you. okay. Don't worry about it. It's not my day. It's everybody else's. I just wanted to be here for everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, guys. Guys, make sure you come see us, all right? Even if it's just to say hi, when this nonsense is over, anybody that ever wants to grab a cup of coffee, it's on me, all right? Absolutely. I want that, I want that job, yeah. Judge. What? I want that job you just offered, Judge. <laughs> what job is that? I don't know. You said you're going to have to hire me for something. Oh, yeah, just for, just for your smiley face. <laughs> Angela, you're, you're one of those people. If I ever saw you in a bad mood, the world wouldn't make sense anymore. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you so much, everybody. Everybody be safe. It's great to see everyone. Great to see you, Craig. Thank you. Nice to see you, Hi, Judge. Everyone. Oh, Hi, you congrats. Hi, Hi, guys. Congrats. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. Congratulations. Bye, guys. Bye. Caitlin, great work. Proud of you guys. <laughs>